In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to tile a bathroom floor. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel is all about building your house saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So this bathroom is a standard 5'8 bathroom. It's the most common size you're gonna find in America. So typically you're left with this section that you need to put flooring on. And in this case, it's gonna be tile. So let's get started. The very first thing you're gonna to have to do is calculate the square footage of your bathroom floor. And it's very easy to do so. All you gotta do is measure down the one wall and I got five foot going this way. And then we're gonna measure down the length of the other wall. And this wall is five foot as well. So you do five times five, which is 25. So we know the square footage of this bathroom floor is 25 square feet that we need to cover. And we also need 25 square feet of cement board because that's gonna be the substrate for our tile to set on. So what you need to do though is add 10% to that. So 10 to 15 actually. So that way you know if you make any wrong cuts or if things don't break out perfect and you have scrap that you have plenty to cover the floor. In order to prepare this subfloor for cement board, I'm first gonna scrape off any drywall mud or old thin set from when I installed the tile in the shower. Anything like that needs to come off the floor first. After you removed all the humps off the floor, just be sure to sweep up all the loose debris off the floor next. After I swept up all the large debris, I'll use a shop vac and then just shot back all the loose dust off the floor after that. Wherever the subfloor meets, you wanna make sure it's not raised up here because a lot of times water will get in here and raise them up. So make sure these are flat. And now all you gotta do if they're not, in this case they are flat, but if they're not, you just take a belt sander and sand down the hump and smooth it all out. In order to start out the cement board, I'm gonna start off this back wall and work out towards the door. And as you can see, I got the toilet flange and I got the water lines I got to cut around. So in order to do that, the best thing to do is I'm just gonna measure right off the back wall. So I got eight and a quarter and 15 and a quarter. And I'm gonna write that down. Now I'm gonna measure off this shower and I got 11 and a half and 18 and a half. And I'm gonna do the same to these water lines over here. And instead of drilling holes for the water lines, I'm actually just gonna cut out a section of the cement board to go around it because this is gonna be under the vanity. So it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty right around these water lines. The cement board I'm gonna be using is the quarter inch version of the cement board and it comes in three by five sheets. So if you notice, I didn't get a length on it when I measured it earlier, it's because it's already pre-cut to five foot long. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and mark the marks that I measured off the wall earlier. You could also use a framing square to mark off the toilet flange as well. I'm now just gonna trace the lines out to make a square so I know exactly where that toilet flange was. For whatever reason, if you had to make a long cut, you can use a T-square. It will go across the whole length of the cement board. Now what I need to do is find the exact center. So if we take a look, we got a perfect seven inch by seven inch square. So half of seven inches is three and a half. So we're gonna mark three and a half here, and then come down three and a half this way and right here. So it looks like our center is right there. Now I'm just gonna take a drywall screw and just put it in so I don't go too far and go into the other cement board, but just a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my chalk line, hook to that drywall screw, and I'm going to take my pencil and just grab it like so. And I'm gonna use that to pivot around using that drywall screw to mark that toilet flange. So something like this. And now I'm just going to cut out that circle and that's gonna be my toilet flange. The easiest tool I've found to cut cement board is an oscillating tool with a diamond head attachment. And also, if you're gonna be doing this, be sure to wear a mask of some kind. You don't wanna breathe in the dust that's thrown up from that cement board and also hearing protection. So I'm gonna be wearing this stuff while I'm cutting out the cement board. Before you make your cutout, be sure to use two by fours underneath your cement board so that way you don't cut through the cement board into the other pieces if it's stacked on top of each other like this. An oscillating tool with the diamond head attachment has always been the best way to cut out for these toilet flanges, 
but in the past I have used a utility knife and just gouged around the hole first and before I cut it out. So you could do it that way if you don't have an oscillating tool. As you can see, the toilet flange was cut out really nice and so was around the water line. So in order to get the measurement to cut the rest of this out, I'd like for you to note the door jam. Now what you wanna do is stop your cement board to whichever way your door is gonna be opening or closing so that the transition between the tile and hardwood floor or whatever flooring you're using out in the hallway transitions correctly. So the door slab is gonna be right here in this case. So I measured back one inch to be underneath that door slab so the transition's hidden. And I know the T-mold strip for my hardwood floor is two inches. So if I come over an inch from the inch mark that I made off the drywall, that puts me right here. That piece of cement board was cut and it looks really good as well. So now I'm going to remove these off the floor. I'm now just gonna remove the cement board up off the floor before I mix up the thin set. I'm now gonna show you how to mix up the thin set in order to install the tile and the cement board. So all we need is a five gallon bucket, a half inch drill with a mixing blade, the thin set of course, and some clean water. And also I'd recommend wearing a mask while mixing this up because you don't want to breathe this stuff in while you're mixing it up. I'd like to start out by putting a little bit of water in the bottom of the five gallon bucket and then the thin set mix. And what I'll do is add water and mix it up a little bit at a time because it's really easy to put too much water in this mix. So be careful while you're doing that. After you got it mixed up to a peanut butter like consistency, let it set for five minutes. Now after it's been setting, we mix it up one more time for about three minutes. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a quarter inch notch trowel in that bucket of thin set, and I'm just gonna put a layer of thin set over the floor where that cement board's gonna be installed. What I did is I measured up three foot and made a line, so that way I don't run my thin set farther than the row of cement board's gonna be. So all we gotta do is just take out a significant amount of thin set and just start smearing it across the floor. Be sure to only cover an amount of space in which you can work in in an adequate amount of time because the subfloor will draw the moisture out of the thin set very quickly. Now after we got a nice even layer spread across the floor, we're just going to go ahead and give us a nice quarter inch mark through the whole thing going in the same direction. So repeat this process till we get everything where this sheet's going to be laying covered. If I had a helper helping me this day, I would not have had to dry fit all the cement board. I would have just got the measurement and had them cut it while I applied the thin set to the floor and it would have made the job go much quicker. I'm now going to set the cement board right in that thin set. Now that the cement board is sitting in the mortar, I got to secure the cement board using what's called cement board screws. These are one inch and a quarter, which is used for quarter inch cement board being screwed down to the floor like you're seeing me doing here. And you also need to make sure you put one every eight inches across the floor. When installing the cement board screws, you need to make sure you countersink them right below the surface of the cement board like this. So that way they're not protruding up so it doesn't interfere with the tile. And also you want to make sure you do this in adequate time before the thin set starts sitting up underneath the cement board. I also like to put screws in the seams so that way they're covered up when we tape this joint. A good tip to get more done quicker is if you had a bunch of cement board to screw down, you could pour out an adequate amount of screws on the floor so you don't have to reach in the bucket to retrieve the screws. In order to finish this seam, you first must get fiber mesh tape, and then we're just going to run it right down the center of that seam. I'm now just going to use my 6 inch putty knife and some thin set and just start packing it right into the middle of that seam. Once you got it packed really nice with thin set, we just gotta smooth it out. After the cement board joints are taped, be sure to allow the thin set to dry overnight before installing the tile. First thing I gotta do is place a reference line on the floor using a chalk box. And the width of my tile is 11 and 3 quarter, so I want about an eighth inch expansion gap. So I'm gonna measure off the drywall about 11 and 7 eighths and then strike a chalk line here. Instead of using a chalk line here, you could use a laser line, except if you do, you wanna make sure you can replicate exactly where the line is on the floor because this is just a dry fitting process. Now this reference line is gonna give me a place to which I know I can run my thin set up to without going too far and it also will keep the tile running straight. 
which that is the main reason for it. So when we run the tile, we're just gonna line right up with that chalk line and that's gonna give me a perfectly straight row. So now that we got our reference line, we just gotta cut around these water pipes in order to start the row. I'm gonna show you how to cut the tile using a wet saw, but first I'm gonna go ahead and mark the tile and where it's gonna be needed to cut around these water pipes. So I'm just gonna set the tile up right up against these water lines and mark right on the edge to where it needs cut. So just like the cement board, I'm just gonna cut around these water lines because it's gonna be covered up by a sink. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy here. In order to mark around for the water lines, I'm just gonna hold my speed square right up to the marks I made. And I know I gotta come over three and a half and then I'm gonna hold my pencil on the speed square. I'm gonna just scribe it right down the tile. And then I'm just going to mark the end here. And now I just gotta cut this out and we'll be good to go. One tool I highly recommend you get if you got a lot of tile to do is a wet saw. With a wet saw you can make plunge cuts, you can cut it without creating a lot of dust and it's just the way to go. So I'm gonna be using a wet saw throughout the whole video to cut my tile. And like always, safety first. Eye protection and ear protection. You gotta have them. In order to cut this section out of the tile, I'm gonna to have to make a plunge cut. In order to do so, I gotta loosen up the head of the wet saw and it's gonna allow me to lift it up and make a plunge. And if you've never used one of these before, you got a sliding table here and then you got a water pump that pumps water up to the blade so you can cut without creating a lot of dust. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up and turn the saw on and I'm gonna make the plunge cut into the tile first. I'm now gonna take the tile and turn it around and place it tight against the fence and just cut straight down each one of these lines. And I'm gonna tighten the head back up before I do that. To complete these cuts, I'm just gonna turn it around like so and continue running the blade in these grooves to finish off the cut. We got a nice clean cut to go around those water lines. Let's go test it out. All right, I'm gonna dry fit this cut piece and see if it looks good. And it goes right around those water lines with no problem. And that looks good. So what I like to do in a little bathroom like this is I'm gonna pre-cut the whole bathroom before I use thin set and put it down the floor. So now that this tile is setting on the line where it's gonna be setting, permanently once I put thin set on the floor. I'm just gonna take my spacers and I'm just using these 1 8 spacers and I'm gonna show you this tile leveling system once we get going but this is from the tile leveling system kit that I got and I'm just gonna go ahead and space everything out so that way it's gonna be uh, correctly laid out when I go to cut around everything. As you can see, I got the toilet flange in the way of the next full tile. So what I'm gonna do is take a full tile and lay it tight right against the spacers of the tile I just laid over there a moment ago. And I'm gonna lay this tile right on that chalk line that I made. And now what I'm gonna do is mark about an eighth inch on each side around this toilet flange. So I'm gonna mark it here and there. So I know that I need to cut out for that toilet flange to continue the run. And since this tile luckily breaks right in the middle of the toilet flange, I'm actually gonna mark the center of this toilet flange as well. I've got a dimple right here in the toilet flange so I know where it is. So now I know that's gonna be the center so I can mark around to cut this. Now if you didn't have all this laid out like this, what you would do is mark each end of the toilet flange and draw a square on your tile in order to cut it out. But in this case, we gotta do it a little different. So I'm gonna show you how to do so. Because I know this is about the center of that toilet flange, I'm gonna just take a nail and just tack it on the floor right there. And now I'm just gonna take my chalk box and hook it to that nail. And that's gonna act as a pivot point in order for me to mark the radius of that toilet flange. So now I know when I cut this out, that's going to be the waste. The tool I'm going to be using to cut out for this toilet flange is an angle grinder with a four inch diamond wheel on it. And this is rated specifically for tile and concrete. And what this is going to do is I'm just going to roll around the edge until I cut through on that angle. And also 
You may break the tile while doing this. It's hard to cut this and not break the tile sometimes, but if you break it, you're just gonna have to try again. But I may end up breaking this one. I don't know yet. And like always, make sure you wear a respirator, ear protection, and eye protection when using this tool. The most important part of cutting out this toilet flange with this diamond wheel is safety. Be sure you use the handle and grasp the diamond wheel really firm. And secondly is patience. You want to be very patient when using the diamond wheel. You don't want to rush this because that's how you crack the tiles easy. So as you can see, we got it cut out. Now it did chip this corner off a little little bit so we're going to go ahead and place it up to the toilet flange just to see how critical that is because it will be under the toilet so it might not be perfect but it might be fine all right i'm just going to lay it up to that line that we made and we're going to see what it looks like and it looks like it will work so that little piece that broke off is going to be right back here and it's plenty close enough to that toilet flange to where it isn't going to be a problem but if it did break like clear back around here or something like that, you would definitely want to recut it. So now I'm just going to measure out and keep cutting around and dry fitting all the tile. In order to continue the layout, I must first put a reference line going adjacent from the other reference line that I made earlier. And in order to do so, I need to measure to the edge of this first tile. And it was... 23 and 3 quarter so I'm going to have to come over here and measure off the wall 23 and 3 quarter and make a mark and now I'm just going to place a nail in that mark and I'm going to just take my string line hook it to the nail and we're going to run it well this is a chalk line and I'm just going to run it right to the edge of that first tile and now I know that's gonna be my reference line for my 50% offset. I'm now just gonna take a full tile and find the very center of the tile. And in order to do so, we just get the length of the tile and divide it by two, and then mark the center of the tile that way. So it's gonna be right there. And now that I got the center, all I gotta do is line this center mark up with that grout joint. So we're going to go ahead and lay it right here and I'm going to take my spacers and space it out just like we did the other ones and in order to keep the same grout joint I'm going to lay it right into place and now that's going to be the beginning of our next rose layout and all I got to do is cut these end pieces to fill it in and keep running it. I'm now cutting out the second half of that toilet flange. And as you can see, I'm outside because it does throw up a lot of dust. So I would cut it outside as much as possible. And now as you can see, it fit around that toilet flange really nice. Because it's so difficult to cut out the vents in the floor before you have them put down with thin set, what I'm going to do is mark the floor vent out on the tile ahead of time. But I'm not going to cut it out right now. And as you can see, the vent is right under here. And the reason for this is whenever you go to cut these out, the tile always snaps and it's very difficult to do correctly. So we're gonna cut this out after we install the tile. Now that I got all the tiles pre-cut and ready to go, I'm gonna remove them off the floor and, and install them using thin set. Whenever you pick the tiles up off the floor, be sure to stack them in order in which they were taken off so that way when you go to install them, they're in the correct order already. It's now time to put the tile onto the floor with thin set. Before I use the thin set, I'm gonna get a clean bucket of water and a sponge and I'm gonna dampen the floor down first and just kind of wipe it because the cement board will draw the moisture right out of that thin set. So you're better off to go ahead and get the floor just a little damp first and it also helps clean it a little more as well. I'm now gonna take a healthy scoop of thin set and place it on the floor and just spread it out evenly. And I try not to go past the red line that we made for our starter row because we need to be able to see that line to line up the tile with. Sometimes I will use a putty knife to get the thin set in around objects like these water lines, but sometimes I do not depending on the situation. And now I'm gonna smooth out the thin set, placing the lines in the same direction as best you can. I gotta get around these water lines so it's a little bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna just scrape it off evenly. 
When spreading the thin set using the notch side of the trowel, it doesn't matter if you use the long side or the short side. I'm now going to take the tile that's going to be installed and I'm going to back butter it with thin set. Because these 24 inch tiles can be heavy when holding them in one hand to back butter them, I do sometimes lay it down on a five gallon bucket so that way it supports the weight while I'm back buttering. And after you back butter it, we're going to take our notch trowel same way, run all the notches in the same direction across the tile. And now I'm going to take the tile and place it right up to that red line. And once we get it about in the position to where we're flush with that red line, we're just going to wiggle it into place. And if I get any thin set on the tile, I'm just going to wipe it off now because it's much easier to wipe off now than it is later. And now that I'm lined up with my red line, I'm going to continue the process for the rest of the row. Again, like I mentioned earlier, as you can see, it's very difficult to get the lines of the thin set to go in the same direction around things like this toilet flange, but just do the best you can. I'm now going to take the spacers that came with the tile leveling system and I'm going to place them back into the tile that I just installed because that's going to correctly space the tile. And now I'm going to back butter the next tile and get it stuck on the floor. After we got the tile back buttered, we're going to place it in place. I'm just going to stick it right here where it goes. And the same thing, we're going to try to line up with our red line here. And now when you have thin set push up through the tile, I'll always clean it out with a pencil or anything that can scrape it out because you definitely want to avoid having a bunch of thin set sitting up in this crack. And now to continue the run, we're going to take spacers and place them going up to the next tile. A good tip for placing tile in the far corners of rooms like you see here is just grasp the edge very tight and just lay the back end first and then the front end down. When I get up to the shower pan, I'm going to take these eighth inch spacers and place them tight into between the shower pan and the tile and I'm going to come to the end of this row and wedge it tight so it doesn't move as well. I'm now going to jump over to the next row. That first row is ran between the shower pan and the wall and now I'm going to take the spacers to the tile leveling system. I'm going to go ahead and place them where they go before I go any further here and you want to stay about two inches away from the edge or so. Just like before, we're gonna dampen the subfloor down. I was very fortunate to have a helper this day. As you can see, he's reaching into that five gallon bucket getting thin set and he's back buttering the tile and handing it to me. So the process went much faster with his help. The next tile, I got my center marked and now I'm just gonna lay it right up to the center of that grout joint right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and wiggle that into place. Now you wanna pay attention to how flush you are with the tile row that's already laid. So it looks like we're setting about flush here now. So that's good because once we put our leveling system in, it's not going to work it in too much. It's going to set about right. Now I'm just going to put my spacers in to prepare for the next tiles. So you're aware there are multiple brands of tile leveling systems. The one I am using is not the only one on the market. I'm now going to show you how to use the tile leveling system. As you can see, we got this tool that's going to be used to squeeze the wedge in between the spacers. And we got a bunch of wedges that came with this kit. And if you want to purchase any of this stuff, I'll put a link in the description below to this product. But all you got to do with it is take the wedge. You have a side with ridges in it. And then you have a smooth side. The smooth side goes down. So all you got to do is slide it right into those clips like so. And then once you slide them into the clips, you just take your tool. And then this part's going to straddle the wedge. And then it's going to squeeze it. And then it's going to clamp down onto the spacer and that's going to help level up the edges of the tile with each other. So we go through and do that to every one of the spacers. And if you put the wedge in and it shifts the tile around, just be sure to shift it back into where it was at. Once you get used to the tool, it is a breeze to clamp down the tile leveling system. All right, now I'm going to install this one right up to that toilet flange that we cut out earlier. Lay it down gently in the place. I'm now going to take a wedge and wedge it against the shower pan to hold it tight. And I got that row wedged in there so it won't move. And now I'm just going to put my spacers in here or my wedges and tighten them up. 
I recommend that you wear a tool bag like I'm doing here. As you can see, I'm pulling the items out for the tile leveling system and I don't have to reach around the room looking for them. Now we just continue that process and run all the tiles out to the doorway of the bathroom. I now have all the tile installed over the whole bathroom floor but I got to allow 24 hours before I grout it to allow the thin set to set up underneath the tile. The next step is we gotta remove the tile leveling system and to do so, all you need is a rubber mallet and you simply just smack the spacer and it's gonna break it right off. And to remove one of these wedges, all you gotta do is lift up on the leveling system and kind of work the wedge out. And you can do it that way for whatever reason you had to just remove the wedge. But for most sake, you're just gonna smack them all out between the tile. I'm now gonna cut out for that floor vent. And what I'm gonna use is that diamond wheel that I used earlier to cut out the toilet flange. And also, you wanna make sure you wear all your safety equipment, your eye protection, ear protection, and your respirator. And while I'm cutting this out, I wanna have a helper hold the end of a shot vac up to the blade or next to it, so that way we can collect most of the dust with the shot vac. So I'm gonna get the camera down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I only do this if I have cut several tiles and already broke a few. Then I will go ahead and secure it down to the floor using the thin set and cutting it out later like you see me doing here. So it is not a common practice that I do. It's only for the tiles that keep cracking. And you'll notice whenever you have a full tile like you see here in the vents right in the middle, it's a very common occurrence. So I recommend that you definitely try a couple times though before you go this method because it's a lot of extra work and also retrieve any debris that goes down into the vent while cutting it out this way. Because cutting the hole out that way throws up a lot of dust, I definitely double check to make sure the vent that's gonna be installed here works. And as you can see, it fits in there nicely because you don't wanna to have to cut more of that out later once the house is finished and you're gonna throw up a lot of dust and have to clean up the whole bathroom all over again. So just a little tip. I'm now gonna prepare the floor to be grouted and in order to do so, I'm gonna take a razor scraper and scrape any of the thin set that's on the floor that won't come up easily. And then I'm gonna take the razor scraper and get any of the thin set out between the joints so that way we can have a place for the grout to go into if it's built up too much, like right here. We're gonna make sure we get that removed really well. Then we're gonna sweep up this whole floor and clean it really well before we start grouting. After I sweep the floor up with a broom, I use a bucket of clean water and a damp sponge to clean up the dust off the tile. I'm now gonna mix up the grout, and the grout I'll be using is called sanded grout. And this can go up to a 5 8 inch joint clear down to a 1 8 inch joint. We're doing a 1 8 inch joint and I got an empty 5 gallon bucket, a half inch drill with a mixing blade and you don't need a setup this big but I use this to mix up everything and then I got a bucket of clean water and the first step is to pour in your desired amount of grout enough to get the job done that you're going to be doing and then you just slowly add water and mix it up as you go to get a peanut butter like consistency. And I'm now gonna put my respirator on so I don't breathe in this dust. Now that you got it to a peanut butter-like consistency, we continue to mix this up for about three more minutes. Now that we got this totally mixed up, we're gonna let the whole thing set for five minutes. Now that this has been setting for five minutes, we just remix this up for two to three minutes. I now got my bucket of grout here and I got what's called a rubber float. And this is what you use to place the grout in the joint. And also be sure to invest in some good knee pads. I'll put a link in the description below for those as well too. But the first thing we gotta do is just get a good little scoop right out of the bucket. And we're gonna go ahead and just place it right into the grout joint like so. And I like to force my grout into the joint like this. Now, if these were little tiles, I would take it and smear it across all the tile grout joints. But in this case, since they're two four, 24 inch tiles, your joints are so far apart, it makes more sense to just go locally into each grout joint like so. So when you grout a floor, it goes really quick. So I always start from the back of the room and work towards the door that's behind me because you don't want to go ahead and backtrack into what you've been working on, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all the grout joints and be sure not to smear the grout out of the joint. Always try to go in a diagonal fashion like so. 
anywhere that's going to require caulking, like right here where the shower pan and tile meets, be sure not to get grout in that joint. So always be extra cautious in that area. And also, in this case, I need to put the grout on the bullnose trim and the little piece I had to finish to finish this shower because I need the towel down on the floor before I finish these couple pieces. So I'm gonna hit that as well. But again, just be cautious not to get it in the caulk joint. All right, now it's time to wipe the grout off the towel. You gotta let it set for at least 20 minutes. And as you can see, there's a haze here where it's starting to dry some. So that's a clear indicator it's time to wipe it, but the joint is still wet. And also, I just wanna point out real quick, I had plenty of grout left over. So I just filled in that spot back here around those pipes. You don't have to do that, but I did just because it had a lot of grout left over. So first thing we do is go ahead and get a nice damp sponge, wring out most of the moisture, almost all the moisture to where it's just damp. Because if it's too wet, it's gonna make the joints look kind of funny. And then when we go to wipe it, we wanna to try to go in the same direction and wipe off bulk of it on a diagonal like so. You don't wanna sit in the joint and scrub it like this or like this because it'll pull the grout right out of the joint. We don't want that. We want the grout to stay in the joint. So going diagonal is a must here. So after we wipe with one side of the sponge, flip it over and we're gonna wipe with the other. So you're gonna do something like that. Now as you can see, it leaves that grout joint looking really good. So now I'm gonna do that to the whole bathroom floor. After the first wipe down, I let this set up for about another hour. And as you can see, all the haze on the floor is dried and it's due to be wiped off again. And now what we got to do is do exactly what we did the first wipe down. We're just going to wipe in the same direction on a diagonal. But this time, we're going to make sure we get more of the bulk haze off instead of the bulk grout. So now it's all about trying to get a final product here. So. I'm gonna go through and do the whole bathroom floor this way. And don't be surprised if, you're, if you gotta do this step a few times. I know it usually takes about three wipe downs to get all the grout haze off. And then you typically gotta use a grout haze remover for a polished look. Now for the final touch to this tile floor job, I'm gonna use 100% silicone caulk. And I'm gonna run a bead of caulk around the shower pan so it seals so water doesn't come down and go in this crack between the tile and the shower pan. So some people would grout this crack, but I always use 100% silicone. So the technique that I use is I first have a dry, clean rag, and I'm just gonna wipe the surface of where the grout or where the caulk joint's gonna be. So we're gonna get that nice and clean and dry. And then I'm gonna take my caulk gun and I have a 45 degree angle cut on the tip of the caulk gun. And now I'm just gonna come down here at the very start and just run a nice bead in just a little tip. Just keep your gun moving so that way you don't get a significant buildup of silicone caulk. And be sure to fill up that crack full of silicone. Now what I'm gonna do is take a damp rag and just dampen the end of my finger. And this is how I'm gonna shape the caulk. I'm just take, gonna take my finger and place it right in the caulk at a 45 degree angle and just smooth it out, right like so. If you wanna learn how to tile a kitchen, check out this video, it'll help you out.